At least 660 lives lost in the U.S. today just from COVID-19, and it's especially difficult to know that there will be more deaths. Today at the president's briefing, we were told again that the number of American deaths could reach as high as 200,000. The president warning of painful weeks ahead. In Detroit, the rush to build a hospital as concerns rise about that city becoming the next hotspot. Here in New York, makeshift morgues are being built to handle the crush of bodies. While well, the most imminent threat of this virus is to our physical health, for many Americans, there is another existential threat. How do I pay my rent? How do I put food on the table? At the end of this trying month, we begin tonight with Clayton Sandell on the growing economic woes facing our country. The coronavirus pandemic is slamming the U.S. workforce like an iceberg striking the Titanic. And now the race is on to help millions of workers before the entire economy sinks. My name is Christopher Spitaleri and um, I'm a server slash waiter from Roosevelt Island, um, New York. Like so many others, Chris Spitaleri is out of a job. These days, he's spending most of his time on the phone, desperate to sign up for unemployment. I worked in a diner named Nisi, and um, sorry, I'm currently on the phone with unemployment, like I am every single morning, on hold. Yesterday I was on hold for 173 minutes. After 100 and I think 50 something minutes, it was disconnected. So I'm hoping for a different turnout today. Last week, 3.3 million Americans filed for unemployment, the largest number ever recorded, three times the number of people employed by Apple, Target, GM, Boeing, and McDonald's combined. On March, March 16th, on Monday, my diner was shut down along with all other restaurants in New York City and bars, and I lost my job. That's it. Um, so uh, my, my savings is running very, very, very low, and um, I need money to eat. I need money to pay my bills. Um, so if somebody would just pick up the phone and try to, you know, talk to me, it would be really nice. For many, April 1st is no joke. Rent is due. We need a rent freeze, a rent suspension. If they're not going to do it in New York or state by state, then they have to do it federally. So many Americans rent their homes and rent their small businesses. $1,200 is not enough to get by. All right. Thank you all. The stimulus package passed last week is bringing some relief. Today, the federal government said small businesses can begin applying for loans as part of a $349 billion paycheck protection program aimed at helping businesses cover payroll. In Individuals making less than $99,000 a year will also get a check, but Alice Stanford says it won't be enough. Supposedly they're sending us $1,200 from the federal government, which will not pay my rent. I guess it's better than nothing. Some private companies are helping too. Tyson Foods announcing it'll pay out $500 bonuses to more than 115,000 frontline workers. Uber will give 10 million free rides and free food deliveries to healthcare workers and seniors in need. Millions of others have a different problem, still employed, but now more exposed as they work to keep essential businesses like grocery stores and hospitals like the one where J.R. LeBlanc works running. I have to go in and I have to clean the rooms. I have to take the garbage out. Um, and, you know, you're always concerned about bringing something like that home. So my message to everybody out there is stay home. And I'm risking my life and the nurses. And I'm just asking you to please listen to what they're telling you. Stay home. Whole Foods employees today called for a mass sick out demanding corporate owner Amazon provide health care for all part-time workers, guaranteed hazard pay, and to shut down any location where a worker tests positive for COVID-19. Walmart says it's adding safety features to stores and taking the temperature of every worker. In Southern California today, L.A. County supervisors voted to require mandatory safety upgrades for grocery and delivery companies, requiring employees to wash hands every 30 minutes, security to enforce social distancing, and access to coronavirus testing. Or someone Chris Spitaleri says the kindness of others is helping him survive. If only he could reach that unemployment office. And I was just disconnected from the unemployment line once again. Mm -hmm. 
And Clayton Sandell joins us now. Certainly a lot of pain right now and for many is still in the days and weeks ahead. We heard from that restaurant worker who was not able to get through to the unemployment office. As staggering as the new jobless numbers are, could that really be indicative that we're not even getting the full picture of the true unemployment numbers? Yeah, Lindsay, the short answer is yes. And one thing to keep in mind is that traditionally, those freelance, those part-time workers were not eligible for unemployment benefits. But with the stimulus package that was passed last week, they are now eligible. So you may see a lot of new people applying. And if you're looking for estimates uh, of where these unemployment claims might end up this week, the numbers are not good. It's anywhere from around 4 million, that's a Citigroup estimate, all the way up to 6.5 million. That comes from Pictet Wealth Management. So uh, even that low estimate, Lindsay, would still be another unemployment record. Clayton Sandell, thank you so much for that report. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.